Hello everyone, I hope you all have been watching my videos on the topic Nervous System in Humans. We have discussed about neurons, the structure of the human brain. Today, we will continue with the central nervous system, that is the second part we have already discussed the brain. Today, we will continue with the spinal cord. Now, if we take a cross section of the spinal cord, we see that it consists of two halves joined together and there is a canal in the center. So these two parts join together and form a small canal in the center which is known as the central canal. Now in the brain, we've already discussed that the outer part of the brain consists of the brain matter which consists of perikaryons and the inner layer is the white matter which consists of axons. Here it is just the opposite. Here the inner layer forms the grey matter and the outer layer forms the white matter. The grey matter like the brain consists of perikaryons and the white matter consists of axons. That means the arrangement of neurons is just the opposite of that of the brains. In the brain, the perikaryon forms the outer layer, axon forms the inner layer, whereas in the spinal cord, it's just the reverse. The perikaryons form the inner layer and the axon forms the outer layer. Like in the brain, now we've done, the brain is protected by three membranes known as meninges. And in between the meninges, we have the cerebrospinal fluid. Here, we find the cerebrospinal fluid inside the central canal. So inside the central canal, we find the cerebrospinal fluid. So here also, like the brain, it protects the spinal cord from mechanical shocks and injuries. And it also provides nourishment to the spinal cord. Now, what is the, so the structure of the spinal cord is very simple. See, two, uh, two structures joined together to form a central canal, which is filled by cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid protects the spinal cord from mechanical shocks and injuries. And it also provides nourishment to the spinal cord. The inner layer... Uh, of the uh, spinal cord consists of the grey matter and the outer layer form is consists of the white matter. Grey matter consists of perikaryons and white matter consists of axons. It has a very simple structure. Now what is the function of the spinal cord? Now the spinal cord, it controls all the reflexes below our neck. Okay, so it controls all the reflexes below our neck. Now there is another term called reflex action. Now if you touch a hot iron, what do you do? You immediately remove your hand or do you think, oh I touched my, touched a hot iron, now I have to remove my hand. You don't do all that thinking. As soon as you touch a hot iron, you remove your hand. Even when you, uh, suppose a very sharp thing pricks you, what do you do? You immediately remove your hand, isn't it? So these actions which do not require thinking are called reflex action and it is controlled by the spinal cord. So uh, actions or reflexes which do not require thinking and they are very automatic are controlled by the spinal cord. So how does a reflex action work? So suppose you touch a hot iron, the sensory, now we've already done about sensory nerves. Isn't it? Now these sensory nerves consist of sensory neurons. That means neurons which carry impulses from the organ to the central nervous system. So the uh, sensory neuron carries a reflex to your spinal cord and then from here 
Now what happens? Remove your hand. Automatic response. Now this impulse, that means a response impulse, that means remove your hand, is sent first to the association neuron. Now association neuron together form, forms the mixed nerve which we've already done, which consists of both motor and sensory neurons. And then the sensory association neuron transfers this impulse to the motor neuron. The motor neuron, we've already done the motor nerves, they carry impulse from the central nervous system to the organs. So the motor neuron will bring back the impulse to your muscles and then we remove our hand. So here, which receives the stimulus? Now you're touching the hot iron, so that is your stimulus. So the organ that receives the stimulus is known as receptor. So from the receptor, the sensory neuron carries the impulse to the spinal cord. From the sensory neuron, it is passed to the association neuron. Then the impulse of the message to remove your hand is passed on to the motor neuron and brings to your muscles and you remove your hand. So the muscles that receives the impulse to remove your hand is known as effector. Okay, so see the pathway. From the receptor to the sensory neuron, from the sensory neuron to the association neuron, association neuron to the motor neuron, and then to the effector. See, the message of the impulse is not carried to your brain. So this is called reflex action and the pathway that is followed is known as reflex arc. So reflex arc is the shortest pathway that is followed by an impulse which is not carried to your brain. Stimulus is collected by the receptor. Receptor carries the impulse to the sensory neuron. It is passed on. It carries it to the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the response is uh, given to the association neuron and then passed on to the motor neuron, it brings to the effect. And what is your response? You remove your hand. Okay? And this is known as reflex arc. Now, reflex action is again of two types. One is natural and the other is conditioned. So reflex action can be natural reflex or a conditioned reflex. Natural reflex. Like you are born with it. No one has to teach you. So even a small baby knows that if a bright light is shown on his or her eyes, she has to blink her eyes. No one has taught her. So he or she is born with it. So such a reflex is known as natural reflex. Conditioned reflex is something which you learn through experiences. For example, while driving a car, you know that if someone crosses the road, you have to apply the brakes. That is due to experience. Okay, so these even another one thing is after every class, you know, the bell rings. You know that when the bell rings, this class gets over and another class begins. So this type of reflexes is known as conditioned reflex. Natural reflex, you are born with it. Conditioned reflex, you learn through experiences. So thank you everyone for watching my video. I hope you all understood what was done today. Thank you. Bye.